Today I'm going to take a look at a very popular 3DS emulator called Citra. To me, the 3DS was one of my favorite consoles as a kid, and today I'm going to see how this emulator stacks up to the memories of my childhood. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Citra, and also go over some of the emulator's features along with testing my performance in some games, and of course mentioning any problems I encounter. So we're basically just going to go over almost every aspect of this emulator. So let's get right into it. All you have to do in order to get Citra is go to its website and click the button to download the installer. Once you do that, it's pretty simple to get running. You choose the install path and what version you want to install, the stable version or the experimental one. I went with the stable version. Next you go into the Citra folder, into the folder called Nightly M-I-N-G-W, and you have to click on Citra QT in order to actually run the emulator. I will say that if I'm gonna knock Citra for anything, it's probably this. It's a bit confusing to figure out where the actual application is to launch Citra, uh, but once you do that, it is pretty easy to get going. I mean, you can just make it a shortcut for it and then you're good, right? So once you actually get in there, you have a config tab where you can do things like increase the internal resolution of games, change the audio rendering, and map controls for your preferred input method. I will admit that there aren't a whole lot of extra features and options in regards to customization. I mean, but my only real gripe is that there doesn't appear to be an in-game overlay for FPS and frame times. Uh, besides that, it's pretty good though, it's, it's not too bad at all, as far as the interface goes. Once you're comfortable with your setup, all you gotta do is tell Citra where your games are, and you're golden. Once you get into a game, you have the classic save and load state functions, but the cool thing is that you can change the dual screen layout. You can have them one on top of the other, side by side, or big and small, which is the one that I chose. Now as for game performance... I honestly can't say that I'm really that impressed. Well, I, I will say first that looking at Citra's website, you can see how many games are playable, and it appears, looking at it, that there's quite a few that are in proper working order. They have a breakdown of how many games are perfect, how many games are great, how many games are good. Uh, it's also nice that you can search for a game to see if it's playable or not. However, when it came to my actual experience playing the games, honestly, I, I can't say it was very good. Now, the first thing I did when I opened up a game, naturally, was to push the resolution up to 4K. I thought to myself, I mean, hey, look, if I can play Wii U games at 4K, if I can play all these other games at 4K, and I can handle, you know, modern games at decent resolutions, 3DS should be no problem, right? <laughs> yeah, no. I discovered that in pretty much any of the games I tried, the game would just lug and stumble constantly at anything above native resolution. In fact, both Pokemon Y and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker both performed badly even at native resolutions. Now granted, when I was recording, performance did improve slightly, but not by much. And I'm, I gotta admit, I was kind of shocked and definitely a bit disappointed by this. For reference, my laptop that I'm running this on has a Core i7-10875H and an RTX 2070 Super Max-Q. Now yes, I know that these are laptop specs, not desktop, and it's also like a generation old, it's not brand new. But the thing is, it's still pretty high-end for a laptop, and I'd say it's at least solidly mid-range even today. I mean, like, this laptop, it maybe isn't the most powerful ever, but I mean, it's more powerful than the full-size de desktop I was actually using just last year. I can tackle modern games at decent settings and emulate just about anything under the sun that's properly optimized, so I was really surprised to see that I was struggling so much to run some of these 3DS games. And that's really what made me think that this emulator is perhaps just a tad bit unoptimized still. 
Captain Toad is listed as great on the compatibility scale, but I honestly wouldn't play it with the performance I was getting, even at native resolution. That's not to mention the fact that, honestly, these games do not look good. They really, really don't. I mean, I think the stock resolution is, what, like 240p? N now, granted, okay, these games look a lot better when you're looking at a 4-inch screen instead of a 15-inch screen, but still, I mean, wow, they just, they do not look good on a big screen. I mean, I can, I can count the pixels. Of course, you know, increasing the internal resolution would help a lot with that, if I could actually do that without bogging down the performance, but sadly, that isn't the case, I can't do that. I also wanted to mention that I intended to test more than just three games, but for some reason the other ones I tried to test wouldn't even start. I don't know if that's my fault or the emulator though, so I'm, I'm not gonna knock Citra for that. Now maybe I'm just being a little nitpicky here, but compared to my experience with emulators for other Nintendo consoles, this one was honestly kind of a letdown. I do still think it's a cool emulator, and I really like how you can move around the dual screens and how easy it is to install, but I feel like there's definitely still a bit of work to be done. It's a nice emulator, but I'm probably going to stick to my real 3DS for now. Some of the games seem to perform okay, but others seem to just lag no matter what I do. It's possible that maybe with some better hardware these games will run much better, but it seems strange to me how poorly these games run, given how low-powered the 3DS was as a console. I mean, seriously, this, this thing, the 3DS did not have a lot of power. It shouldn't take a lot of grunt to emulate these games unless, like I said, it's just really terribly unoptimized. But I, I do think that with some time and some further optimization, this emulator can become something really great. I mean, there's a lot of games on the 3DS and I think this emulator has the basis for something that can be really great. It has some decent features and whatnot. It's just, it doesn't seem to be, at least on my computer, it doesn't seem to be quite up to snuff quite yet. That's going to be it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let me know what emulator or game you want me to talk about next. I'll see y'all next time.